Greg Fraser here again. I've got a question from Seth McDonald, one of our subscribers, about what he can do when he has an ankle injury and still wants to box or compete in fighting, or if you actually roll an ankle. Uh, this is gonna be talking about after the very basics of recovery, how you can now get an ankle that has already been injured, uh, possibly from a sprain or an Achilles injury, how you can get that back to being able to compensate and be able to still train and do your fighting. Okay, so join me. For those of you who don't know yet, this is the Stealth Core Trainer. It's used primarily for plank training and so on, for your, for your abs and core. Uh, but I've adapted this to be able to use it with your feet. So for people that have ankle problems, Achilles recovery, or just doing your joint dexterity training, this is great. You can just simply get on here and move it. It moves a little quicker and easier than like the BOSU balls do. And there's games, you can go right down here. And if you order it, you can set up your iPhone or your smartphone and play whichever games. I don't have that on, but if you look at Stealth Trainer, you can, you can see how the games work. So this is a great way because you're spending a lot of time just rotation with your ankle. I don't even need anything there. The BOSU is another great tool right here as well. And with the BOSU, you can either start with a seated position. You could do single leg rotations, ankles going every which way, okay? Double leg, and then again, gain into, now gain onto the ball and working your side to side. Sorry about the craziness in the room right now, okay? So we got our side to side stuff. Another really good one is to switch Okay, so you have one foot in behind and one foot up front, and now you're getting that boxers, okay? These are all really good for you to be training. As soon as you're done that, I'll come off here. Stay with me. I'm filming myself, so. Okay, this is just sort of very random training. I just wanted to get this out to you guys. So, also coming over the ball, okay? Working your job over the ball. Boom. Also simply working on, working your patterns, traveling over the ball here. Okay, standing single leg and working your balance and working your different kicks, stabilizing with this is also very good for building the dexterity. Uh, using these vibration plates are very effective. All you do is no end. Uh, set your start and you're primarily working at first just your single holds. Okay, just work on stabilizing, focusing on a point, getting your stability going. You can then work kicks. This multiple vibration that's going through, you can probably hear it in my voice right now, is very powerful. It allows you uh, thousands of vibrations coming through your body, uh, which gives you that shock impact and really good for, uh, for your bone density. Also, you can start working just here on simply moving through ranges of motion. Try to get your knee forward, the heel down, to touch, okay? Rotation, and that vibration greatly helps what you're doing here. One other thing are shoe shiners. Working your shoe shiners, okay? So hitting your bag with your shoe shiners, keep those heels going. If you are in acute pain or it's swollen, don't do things where you're doing your ankle drops. Only start from flat and raise up, okay? You can also start on building that power of stepping back and forth with your shadow boxing, okay? One of the things you gotta watch if you have ankle problems is your knee alignment, okay? So when you're boxing, little extra things that you can remember is when you turn, don't throw punches with your heels flat, okay? Now, some people will complain about that. That doesn't mean I base off the heel to deliver my power, okay? It just means that you wanna be on the balls of your feet so your knees are on top, you're stacked correctly. Whereas if I'm on my heels, okay, there's no muscle being activated, it's just bone to bone right there. So there's no muscle, you're reducing your potential power. So if you are coming off your heels, that's fine. But one of the things you gotta watch for when you're sparring now is that your knees move with you. My knees sort of point in to each other. Even when I'm throwing straight, I'm throwing hooks as well. They hook, it comes to the center, drop them back down. Try to have 
what we call a closed body zone in Wing Chun, which is the knees are sort of pointing into a triangle. You don't want your feet pointing where the triangle would close behind you. You want it to close relative to where your point, your punching is and your opponent's gonna be. So close off those knees in case you get kicked. Boom, you gotta be able to, to be able to roll. If your heel's down, you're gonna get buckled, you're gonna get caught, you're gonna get tackled, you're gonna get all that stuff. So just by being in here, sitting a little bit down, building those legs, okay? Other things I did when I had the injury is just standing on your toes in the shower. You can simply just, without too much, just keep your heels slightly off the ground when you're standing and try to stand on the balls of your first two uh, toes, okay? On the balls of your foot within the first two toes. A lot of this angle, uh, most common one that you're gonna have from the sprain injury is where you've rolled out. So you really wanna work on that type of stuff. Also try to walk around a little bit, keeping your baby toes off the ground. All right, so those are some quick suggestions you can do. I'll come back, I just wanted to get this answer out to one of my friends here. Uh, thank you, Seth, for the question. And guys, please give us questions because I'm open to answering, whether it's self-defense, functional fitness, a uh, little bit on your nutrition stuff if you're conditioning for a sport or you want to take the weight down or you just want to learn to eat healthy and safe. All right, so give us questions.